Hey, Julia. So after some thinking, I've come to the conclusion that you might not be the best fit for my son after all. Therefore, I'd appreciate it if you two could cancel your engagement as soon as possible. Thanks a bunch. Good morning, Madeline. Is everything okay? It's quite early, so I'm curious what might be troubling you at this hour. You know, they always say it's not good to keep things that bother you bottled up inside. So I thought I'd shoot you a text, bright and early, to let you know that I want you two to break up as soon as possible. Just wanted to get that off my chest, you know? Thank you for being honest with me, I suppose. However, I don't want to call off the engagement, especially not just because you told us to. It would mean a lot to me if you could accept our decision and support our engagement. Wow. Looks like you're determined to keep up with your selfish attitude, huh? Let me tell you, you and Nick are just not meant to be together, especially considering what I found out recently. No matter what you say, I can guarantee you that I'll make sure you two break up. Mark my words. What do you mean, from what you've found out recently? Listen up. I've got all the juicy details about your place of birth and your upbringing. I know all about it. And let me tell you, it's not pretty. You can't hide your past from me. And I'll make sure everyone knows about it. So don't even bother trying to defend yourself. I've got the upper hand, and I'm going to use it to tear you down. Consider yourself warned. Okay, and what exactly did you learn that was so awful? Oh, look at that. You attended some obscure little university out in the middle of nowhere. Might as well be a community college, huh? I can't possibly have someone like you who went to such a subpar institution married to my esteemed and elite son. It's simply out of the question. So you're saying the reason you want us to call off our engagement is because of where I went to university? Well, it's certainly reason enough. No, it's really not. Oh, and let me enlighten you about our family status. You see, my husband happens to be a high-ranking lawyer, one of the top individuals in this entire country. And as for my son, Nick, well, he's a Yale graduate, no less, and is currently working in the prestigious position as the head of human resources at a top-tier company. Oh, and did I mention that my second-born son, Dan, is currently studying at Yale as well. It's clear that our family is the pinnacle of success. Now, let's talk about you. A mere graduate from a community college like yourself won't fit in our elite family. You simply don't fit the bill, and it's abundantly clear that you have no place among us. You're right. I didn't attend a university as prestigious as your son or his brother. But educational background isn't the sole measure of a person's worth. Only people with poor backgrounds would say something like that. Well, I thought you already knew this, but Nick and I actually work together at the same company. In fact, we both started working there around the same time. That top-notch company you're so proud of? They hired me too. Also, I happen to work in the same department as Nick. So you see, regardless of where we went to school, I'd say I'm doing pretty well in making my mark. Don't even entertain the thought of comparing yourself to Nick. Sure. You may work at the same company, but let's be real here. 
He landed that job because of his exceptional educational background and overall excellence. I highly doubt your qualifications even come close. I bet you resorted to flirting with the interviewers to secure your position. It's clear that your presence there is nothing more than a fluke compared to Nick's genuine achievements and talent. I would never. How dare you even suggest something like that? Oh, Julia, let's get real here. We're talking about a top-class, large-scale company, not some amateur operation. There's absolutely no way they would hire someone like you based on your dull credentials. That's probably the reason my exceptional son got involved with a lowly flea like you in the first place. But hey, let's give credit where it's due. That company made a brilliant decision when they brought my son on board. He's an absolute asset. Now, if only they could take some measures to prevent foolish choices like hiring clueless girls such as yourself. Hold on right there. Take back what you just said. Which part? I won't take back a single word of it. First things first, let's clear the air. I absolutely did not flirt with anyone during the hiring process. I went through the necessary steps, aced the test, and nailed the interview. My performance spoke for itself, and I landed the job fair and square. And you know what? I'm thriving in the company. My bosses have nothing but praise for me and my work. So rest assured, I'm doing great and making a positive impression. I'm absolutely certain that your flirtatious tactics alone helped you to where you are now. Let's not forget that you only landed that position because Nick happens to be the head of the department. It's clear as day that you're receiving special treatment, enjoying all the perks while others have to work twice as hard to earn their place. You can't be serious. Oh, look at you. Ms. Nobody from the middle of nowhere, thinking you could actually land a job and hold on to it without resorting to other tactics. It's one thing to play the game during the interview, but it seems like you just can't resist keeping up the act even after getting hired. I'm not as clueless as everyone else around here. I see right through your little charade, and it's not impressing anyone. I did my best, did my internship, and studied and prepared for my interview just like everyone else. Now I'm just doing my absolute best at my job. Wow. You're a real piece of work, aren't you? You despicable little girl. I can't believe Nick fell for your cheap tricks in the first place. Oh, and let me burst your bubble while I'm at it. Flirting won't get you anywhere in life. Just wait until that pretty little face of yours starts to wrinkle, and you'll be put right back in your pathetic place. Anyway, do us all a favor and stay away from my son as soon as possible. Trust me, he deserves way better than you. Hey, hold on a second. Would you just listen to what I have to say? I don't have any time to listen to a girl who only graduated from what's basically a community college. Oh, and by the way, there's something else I should mention while you're here. After you break up with my son, you should probably go ahead and change to a different department too. I can't have someone from a lowly school like yours Anywhere near my precious boy. You're nothing but dead weight, and you'll only bring him down with your pathetic excuses for education. Just hold on a second and listen to me. Now, just be a good girl and do as you're told. 
I can't believe someone like you would try and marry my son. Absolutely absurd. Julia, I'm so sorry. My mom messaged you earlier this morning, didn't she? She said some really awful stuff to you. I really am so sorry. She sure did. She looked up my university and was talking about how it was basically the same as going to community college. Then, she went on to say that I wasn't the right person for you. I'm really sorry she said such awful things like that. Even from when I was a kid, she's always been the kind of person to really care about people's backgrounds. I told her to cut it out so many times, but I don't think there's any way to get her to change now. Whatever. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. You can't just change people's values so easily. I think the best thing I can do now is ignore what she said. You're such a great person, Julia. I love how you don't overreact or take things like this too seriously. Thanks. But, you know, there was actually something else she said that I disliked more than her comments about my education. Wait, did she say other rude things to you too? She said that you were the head of our department. Then, she went on to say that since you're the head, you're giving me special treatment and that's the only reason I'm keeping my job there. Now, where could she have gotten that idea? Tell me if I'm wrong, but it's the opposite, isn't it? I'm the head of the department, and you work under me? Uh, well, yeah. Sorry about that. I was just showing off a little bit. What's that supposed to mean? You better get explaining. My mom's always been so proud of me for being a Yale graduate. I couldn't let her find out that you're my boss. I was sure, and still am, that she'd make a big deal about it. That's why I ended up telling her that I was the head of the department and that you worked for me. Then why don't you fix this misunderstanding for me? I wouldn't want her to continue to think the wrong thing forever. There's also the possibility that she might realize that not everything's about educational background. I don't think I can do that. I'm sorry, Julia. I just can't do it. What? Why not? Telling her my actual job after lying about it all this time would be way too embarrassing. You've got to understand how much that would hurt my pride. Your pride? What about my pride? Don't worry, it'll be fine. I'll figure out a way to deal with my mom. So please, just for now, play along and pretend that I'm the head of the department. I'll figure something out to make my mom approve of our marriage. Hold on a second. You're saying you want me to play along with your lie? You want to hurry up and get married too, don't you? This is the fastest way for us to do that. So please, just don't say anything for now. I'll handle everything. Listen to this, Julia. I've got some great news. My second son, Dan, got a job straight out of university. And he got a job offer earlier than his peers. Congratulations on that. That's wonderful to hear. It really is wonderful, isn't it? And just so you know, he got a job at the same company as his brother. Um, that can't be true. Not only did both of my sons graduate from Yale, now they're both going to work for the same company too. Oh, I sure am blessed with such great sons. Hold on a second. If you mean the same company as me and Nick, there has to be some kind of mistake. That's exactly what I mean. What's the problem? We always decide on new hires right before summer. There's no chance that we would be hiring someone as early as winter, let alone as early as autumn. Excuse me. Are you calling my son stupid? 
Dan is the brother of the head of human resources, and on top of that, he's currently a student at Yale. I can't believe you think elite students would get hired the same way as ordinary people do. That doesn't sound right. Someone like you just wouldn't know. But elite students have their own elite path to getting hired, something you know nothing about. I really don't think that's right. Ha! <laughs> no, it's right. Now, from spring, both of my sons will be working at the same top-class company. I'll be even more proud than I already am. So, having said that, I have a request. I'd appreciate it if you could quit your job before Dan starts there. It's not only about Nick anymore, but Dan too. Excuse me? Why do I have to do that? The other day, I asked you to move departments, but I don't think that's going to be enough. What do you think would happen if Dan got put into the department you moved to? I can't stand the thought of someone with such an awful background, having seniority over my wonderful son. That's why I need you to just quit working there altogether. Do you really know no idea how arrogant the things you're saying are? Call off your engagement. Stay away from my son. Move departments. Quit your job. You're unbelievable. Quit it with your complaining, Julia. Nobody asked you. You have no right to talk back to me with an education like yours. How dare you talk to me like that? Allow me to repeat myself. We are an elite household. We can't have some commoner like you hanging around us. It's just so unpleasant. So please, run away and be gone. Run back and work on a small business in your hometown, or something more fitting like that. A commoner? Will you just shut up for a second and listen to yourself? The things you're saying are atrocious. Do you really think you can say whatever you want just because you're an elite family? Shut up, commoner. Just hurry up and do what I tell you. Hurry up and quit your job and stay away from both of my sons. Our elite family has no room for average people. It's best if we don't see each other ever again. Best to rip the bandaid off. Then stop trying to get jobs based on connections. What are you talking about? Okay, I understand. I'll never go near them again. In return, I ask that you and they never come near me again either. In order to do that, I'll start by rescinding Dan's job offer. Yeah, go ahead and try. What power does a commoner like you have? There's no way you could take back his job offer. I have the power of the head of human resources. That's me, by the way. I'm the head of the human resources department. What are you talking about? Nick might have told you that he's the head of the department, but he was just lying to you so you didn't freak out. In reality, I'm the head of the department, and he's the one who works for me. I don't believe that for a second. You can believe whatever you want, but the fact of the matter is that since he works for me, he's just a regular old employee. Nick doesn't have any title or any responsibilities of his own yet. Excuse me. Wait a second. That can't be true. Stop lying about your status. Every single word of it is true. There's no way a Yale graduate would be just a regular employee, and there's absolutely no way someone like you would be head of the department. Nick is far superior to you. 
I understand that as a mother, you really want to think that your son is the best of the best. But within the company, at least, I am superior to him. That's why I am the head of the department. None of this is true. If you don't want to believe me, then take a look at the company's website. My name should be listed there for you to see. Ugh. I didn't think it would be, but your name is really there. What exactly is going on here? How could something like this possibly happen to me? It looks like it's going to take you a little while to cool off. I'll take my leave here. I have to look into the thing about Dan as soon as possible, after all. You can contact me again after you've calmed down if you want. What do you mean, looking into Dan? What exactly do you plan on doing? Our company doesn't have any kind of special hiring route for elite students like you mentioned. I'm responsible for the final decision for every single candidate. Wait, really? Only, I don't remember ever seeing anything about Dan. So, I have to do a very thorough investigation and find out exactly how he was hired. Please be aware that pending the results of this investigation, it's possible that his job offer may be retracted. What? Retracted? You can't seriously be thinking about retracting his offer. He's an elite student from an elite family. You need him. That's all for now. Have a pleasant day. Come on, Julia. What did you do that for? I asked you to play along, and you even said that you would. Now my mom knows everything. Sorry if your mom's mad at you for lying to her for years. I couldn't put up with what she was saying to me anymore. More importantly, Nick, you and I have to talk. What's this I hear about Dan getting an early job offer from our company? I know it was you. Explain to me exactly what happened. Right now, we're talking as employee and boss. What are you talking about? What does Dan have to do with anything? Don't play dumb with me. Your mom said the Elite had their own Elite path to getting hired and that Dan had already gotten a job offer from our company. But as far as I know, I'm the head of the department. Nothing like that even exists. I don't ever remember approving Dan's hire, either. Actually, I don't think I ever even saw his application. So, tell me what's going on? Uh, well, um... I already looked at the database. I know that someone falsely made the documents for the offer. Do you want me to ask the IT department to conduct an investigation? Hold on a second. You don't have to make such a big deal out of it. I was just doing what my mom told me to do. Oh, so your mom asked you to do it. In reality, Dan was having a really hard time finding a job. Even though he wrote that he went to Yale on all of his applications, he didn't even get a single offer. So of course my mom was freaking out about it way more than necessary. That's when she ordered me to give Dan an offer at our company. She said that it would be easy enough for the head of human resources, so I didn't have a choice. Of course you had a choice. Why would you actually go through with something like this? But this is all for you, Julia. It's all for our marriage. I thought I should do something nice for my mom now and get on our good side. If I did that, I thought she would eventually approve of our marriage. Yeah, right. You expect me to believe that? None of this was for me. It was all for yourself. 
You're the one who dragged me into your lie, so you could look good in front of your mom. You did a bad thing just so you could protect yourself. Well, I guess that's not completely untrue. But I swear, I really meant to do it for our marriage. I need my mom to approve of us. I will continue with the investigation of this incident, and I will deal with it as head of the department. Until the investigation is complete. You're not allowed to come to the office. Come on, you can't be serious. Deal with it as the head of the department? That's absurd. We're engaged, did you forget? Right now, like I said. We're talking as boss and employee. So, for now, please refrain from coming into the office. Julia, hear me out. I'm sorry. I'll be the bigger person here and apologize. I'll even approve of your marriage to Nick. What's gotten into you all of a sudden? I said I'll approve of your marriage. You should feel honored. Why the sudden change of heart? I thought you said you didn't want any commoners near your family. Oh, that. I'd appreciate it if you could just forget I ever said that. I was a little upset, and I let my feelings get the best of me. I don't really feel that way about you, I swear. Actually, I think it's so amazing that you worked so hard and were able to get to be a department head. I really do think you're a good fit for my son, after all. You don't even sound like the same person. So please, I'll let you two get married, so you can give Dan his job offer back. He's graduating from Yale, and he's Nick's little brother. Hiring him would be an absolute advantage for your company. No matter how excellent of a candidate he is, that's unfortunately not an option. Our company does not approve of unofficial hiring routes, so there is nothing I can do about it. As head of the department, I'm afraid I can't let this go. Come on, don't say things like that. Just please give him the offer back. I even said I'd approve of your marriage, didn't I? Isn't that what you've been wanting from me this entire time? Just an offer is good enough, please. As head of the department, that should be easy for you. Please, would you just calm down? If you continue on like this, I'll have to report you to my superiors. What for? I lowered myself to your level, and now you're acting all high and mighty. I've asked you so many times now. One might even say too many times. If you want to marry my son, you're going to have to do something for me in return. Excuse me, I'll do no such thing. You want to marry Nick, don't you? If you do, then you have to listen to what I say. First, give my son his job offer back right now. And if you do that, I'll approve of your marriage. Just do it already so we can get past this. I don't want to marry someone who do something like that and get fired. Wait, what? What do you mean, fired? Have you not heard from Nick yet? No. What are you talking about? We did an investigation within the company. Dan's job offer was only given because Nick broke the rules. That wasn't the only thing we uncovered in the investigation, though. It seems that Nick has been breaking the rules over and over again. That can't be true. What could he have possibly done? We let him sit in on some of the interviews. On the day of the interviews, apparently he went up and talked to a number of the female applicants. What? Not mine. That doesn't sound like him at all. Out of those girls? Two of them ended up going to dinner with him. Then, when they rejected his advances, he broke the rules and rejected their applications out of spite. On the other hand, 
there were also some girls he falsely gave high scores to during the interview. No, he would never do that. As head of human resources, I sent that information to my superiors. And then I asked for his dismissal. As of yesterday, Nick no longer works for us. You really got him fired? My little Yale graduate. Why would anyone marry a guy like that? Even if you finally approve of our marriage? I think it's a little late now. Wait just a second. The only thing he did was give in to temptation. You can't blame him for that. Look, I don't care about Dan's job offer anymore. Isn't there something you can do about Nick's job? Anything at all? He graduated from Yale. He's been an excellent student his entire life. Being a good student is certainly an important thing. But you might want to reteach him how to be a good person. That's all I have to say to you. Goodbye, Madeline. Afterwards, Dan paid a visit to my office to apologize for the confusion. He admitted that he wasn't even aware that he had received the job offer initially. I must say, he was quite open and genuine in his communication. The entire office was buzzing with excitement, praising his courage. In light of this, we decided to extend the job offer to him once again. However, Dan surprised us by revealing that his true passion lay in acting. He had only applied for the job due to the immense pressure from his mother's expectations. During the emotional fallout with Nick, Dan found the strength to break free from his mother's influence and pursue his genuine dream. Consequently, he politely declined our job offer. As for Nick, finding a new job proved to be a challenge after his termination due to document falsification and harassment. Consequently, he ended up unemployed. Now, Madeline found herself as the mother of two Yale graduates, one aspiring actor and one unemployed individual. It appears that she spends her days at home dealing with the mounting pressure and perhaps experiencing some level of distress.